Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called West Bay in Dorset. It's about one and a half miles to the south of Bridport on the Jurassic Coast. And we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular walk, starting with an exploration of West Bay, and then we'll be heading east through a golf course to Burton Bradstock for some exploring, and then back along the coastal path with some splendid sights and sounds of the sea. Well, I'm filming on a glorious, sunny spring day, blue sky, a calm sea, as you can probably hear behind me. It should be perfect conditions for a walk, so do come along with us. Well, West Bay is a very picturesque harbour, and I'll go through a little bit about its history uh, in very brief detail. In about 1200, there was first mention of a harbour being constructed, originally known as Bridport Harbour, and indeed it was located about one mile inland near the, the town of Bridport. But over the years, the River Brit, which we'll see shortly, often silted up and the harbour moved to East Cliff and then the present location a few yards to the west in the middle of the 18th century. Bridport itself needed a harbour to export its principal products, rope and nets, and gravel, coal and timber was imported. Indeed, in 1830, there were some 500 vessels using the harbour each year. Well, I've parked my car at the West Bay Road car park on the eastern side of the resort. Most of our walk is going to be on the eastern side and on a very much a circular route. But before we head out into the countryside, let's have a little look at West Bay itself. In fact, just before we go into uh, West Bay by the car park, uh, you'll see uh, these couple of railway uh, carriages, the station kitchen. And indeed, the Great Western Railway reached Bridport in 1857 and extended the line to Bridport Harbour in 1884, really to encourage holiday traffic here. The line between Bridport and West Bay closed to passenger traffic in the 1930s and to goods in 1962. But it's great to see a bit of the track as a memory and it, it certainly looks like the station building is still used, albeit as a restaurant. Well, just here on the right is the West Bay Inn, an 18th century inn, originally called the Neptune Inn, built in 1739, then renamed the West Bay Hotel in 1884, when the new railway station was built nearby. Just wandering through here, this is the, uh, the Customs House Emporium. Bridport Harbour actually became a full bonded port in around 1832, meaning it could collect customs payments. And uh, well, the customs house was built, and the, the bonded store, I believe, was uh, was here just in front of me. Bridport Harbour formerly was renamed West Bay in 1884, and this is the uh, Bridport Arms Hotel. Hopefully you can see it's a bit dark, we're on the sort of northern side. Uh, built in the 17th century, and it's the oldest surviving building in West Bay. Originally it was a cider house called the Sloop, and it then became the Ship Inn, and was renamed the Bridport Arms in 1822. And just next to the Bridport Arms is, uh, well this was the Methodist Church, built in 1849. It closed in 2007 and is now the West Bay Discovery Centre. Well, continuing with our little tour, sweet little pink house over there, which I believe was built a few years after the New Harbour was moved here in the mid-1700s. And just over the road there, that's St John's Church, built in 1835 to 1839 as a chapel of ease to St Mary's Church in Bridport. It consists of a nave, three bay, south aisle, porch and vestry. OK, let's have a little pop inside. As is always the case, I can't find the light switch. <laughs> but it's a very bright day outside so hopefully we should be able to see okay here yeah, lovely and cool which is just what I, I needed uh, 
gorgeous figure, figures just above the altar and a quite stunning uh, stained glass window. Obviously there's the, uh, the pulpit uh, to the left and then just gradually panning around to the side. That's the uh, font, quite a, a, a narrow, thin fault, font. Um, you wouldn't want to be too big a <laughs> baby to get baptised in there. The George Inn, built in uh, 1820, but it burnt down in 1834 and rebuilt in 1839. Certainly going to be plenty of host stories for us to uh, choose from for our pint at the end of the walk, Logan. Well, just in front of me here is the, the River Brit, nine and a half miles long, and its source is just north of Beminster, and it flows uh, to the harbour here via Bridport. Before the establishment of Bridport itself, it was known as the, the River Wooth. Just made our way to the end of one of the piers and we get some great views. But uh, I say we, Logan and I have just had a really lovely walk along the, the beach there underneath the, the cliffs. I say the sea is so calm today. And I say, weather, well, <laughs> I won't keep on about it, but it is brilliant, it really is. One little snippet about West Bay. Uh, the 1959 film, The Navy Lark, was filmed here with uh, oh, Leslie Phillips and Hattie Jakes. Well, the last thing uh, we'll look at uh, before we head out into the countryside is uh, this little area of green here, Fisherman's Green. And in front of me, there's a, a building called the Salt House. It dates from the late 17th century when a, a fleet of ships would sail from the harbour in the spring to Canada, laden with nets and ropes from Bridport, as well as salt, uh, which was stored here. Well, I hope you found that little tour interesting. We'll probably end the walk here with a pint and a, a few fish and chip per places to choose from as well. Well, uh, thoroughly enjoying this little wander along the beach here. A massive cliff just to my left. Um, I'm not going to get too close to it because it looks as though there's, be, there's the odd rock fall from time to time. But it really is quite stunning. I mean, I'm quite a bit back from the, uh, from the foot of it there. Birds up there. Beautiful colour contrast between the sort of yellow of the, the rock and the blue sky above. Beautiful. We're well, seeing it's a glorious spring day and we're on the beach. Time for some Whippet Zoomies. Now dogs are allowed off lead between the 1st of October to the 30th of April on all the beaches round here. But between the 1st of May and the 30th of September, no dogs are allowed on the East or West Beach. Um, they're okay on the East Cliff Beach and West Cliff Beach just a bit further along. Well, if you're going to be following this walk after seeing the video, 
you need to head out of uh, West Bay and just look for a footpath sign on your right and that's going to take us uh, uphill <laughs> in an easterly direction and I think we go through a, a golf course at some stage. <laughs> Well, we've made it to the top of a ridge and we're just about to go through a, a golf course, the uh, Bridport and West Dorset Golf Club. So I've got to keep Logan on a lead for a little bit. But it's a club with a little bit of history. It was the first golf course uh, established in Dorset in 1891. It was only nine holes, although for the first 20 years it was located over on the West Cliff and it moved here to the East Cliff in 1911 and it became an 18-hole course in 1921 and apparently its signature hole is the sixth hole which is uh, well, it's only 129 yards long but it's got a drop of about 90 foot we might see it on the way back <laughs> continuing to make our way across the golf course avoiding low flying golf balls now I think you're roughly about here if we look on a, an 1897 map there were a couple of uh, rifle ranges one 600 yards and one 500 yards um, and the firing points were just to the north on my left and then the targets were right on the cliff edge to the right but I can't see any evidence of them, so we'll carry on with the walk. <laughs> well, just a quick update on the route. We've made our way through the golf course and have now circumnavigated a, a holiday park. I think it's called Freshwater Beach Holiday Park. And are heading towards our next destination, Burton Bradstock. Well, I'm now at Burton Bradstock, a delightful little village standing uh, by the village green. And very sweet it is too. Uh, the uh, village was recorded in the Doomsday Book as Bridetone or something like that, place on the River Bride. And in 1286, the land and the village were acquired by Bradenstoke Priory in Wiltshire, although that's sometimes pronounced Bradstock. So we'll have a, a quick little wander through the village. What have we got here? The Wesleyan Methodist Chapel. 1825 looks like that's the library now and the sign that tells us that it was a, a best kept village in 1998 but still very very pretty and well maintained today let's go and have a look at the church and this is St Mary's Church there was probably an original church here in the 12th century but uh, no remains of that now the nave was rebuilt in the 14th century and in the 15th century, the transepts and tower were rebuilt. In the 16th century, the chancel and north porch were rebuilt and the south aisle added in 1833. And there was a, a general overall restoration in 1897. The south vestry was added in 1967. And looking up, the, the tower clock there dates from 1788. Apparently it came from Christ's Hospital School when the school moved from London to Horsham in 1912. Well, I should have a peep inside. Now this is going to be dark in here, so I might have to put up some, some photographs. There's the font directly on my right, and the, the organ. Lovely wooden ceiling with beams up there and uh, just turning to the left here pulpit on the left actually gets quite a bit lighter the further we go in actually the altar straight ahead and then the two sides 
there and just a quick sit round just to give you an idea what it looks like inside and that's the Anchor Inn which uh, dates to at least the 1870s and sure enough there's an anchor outside I'm delighted to say there's a little dog bar as well so uh, Logan can have a little drink the Three Horseshoes Pub, 17th century. I tell you, I'm tempted to go in there for a quick one, you know. Well, we're now heading southwards. This is the River Bride, six and a half miles long. Its source is at uh, an artificial lake at Bridehead House uh, to the east. It's a Celtic origin uh, or old Welsh breedy. I believe it's sort of related to Cornish Bredian to boil. So that makes it boiling or gushing stream. I've probably got all those pronunciations totally incorrect. Now I've done a little detour down Southover Road because this house here, the cider house, was once called the Dove Inn. And indeed it was used as a smuggler's pub for rendezvous in days gone by. made our way to Hive Beach. Uh, same dog restrictions on the beach as at uh, West Bay. Um, it's owned by the National Trust here. Now just before we have a, an exploration and see if we can find a well-earned ice cream, there's one more thing that I want to show you to the east. And it's right at the top of that hill. Whew, <laughs> made it to the top. Um, well, there's two things to look at up here. Firstly, uh, just to my left, there's our Bronze Age Barrow called Bind Barrow. And then just behind me here, there's a pillbox. And what's slightly unusual about this one is that uh, originally it had a thatched roof on top as camouflage. Um, and you can actually still see some features on top of the roof uh, on the slab. And it's a hexagonal shape. I think it's a type FW322. Not 100% sure to be honest, but uh, there you go. So, but from up here are some fantastic views looking west, Hive Beach down there. Let's go down there and see if we can get an ice cream. Well, folks, if there was ever a time for a Mr. Whippy, then it was today. What a superb setting at Hive Beach on a glorious spring day. The sun is out, the sky is blue, this... The sea is blue. And my ice cream is melting away. Ah, oh, just enjoying a lovely little wander. Just underneath Burton Cliffs here. And I was, uh, I came across a photograph on the internet um, these cliffs were used by the British commandos back in 1942 for Operation Yukon and then again in 1944 by US troops, the cliff assault team, the US Rangers. But apparently uh, they're very similar to the Normandy cliffs, all very much part of the uh, preparations for D-Day. But oh, what a beautiful beach with the waves lashing up against the uh, the sand there. Oh, I could stay here all day. Well, that really was quite heavenly. Sitting on the beach there, 
with my half a Mr Whippy ice cream. So we're now heading back to West Bay, just past the sign that says that's two and a half miles away and we're going to be joining an old friend of ours, the Southwest Coast Path. We should get some terrific views. Well done. Well done sir, keep going. <laughs> Oh, there's a <laughs> apparently there's a a 46 kilometer race taking place today across part of the Jurassic coast. I think Logan and I are quite happy going along at our married man's pace. Well folks just stop for a little pit stop for another fantastic view. Isn't this quite stunning? So looking uh, west, that's uh, East Cliff, looking quite uh, golden in the sunshine now. And then a little bit further on, the pier at West Bay. And then here we've got the river that, um, uh, that we, we saw when we went through Burton Bradstock, that goes out to the sea there. But, oh, and the sea is so calm today in that gorgeous blue, almost turquoisey blue colour. <laughs> I do feel sorry for these folk that are doing this marathon. Some are doing it a lot faster than others. Um, some have got smiley faces, some of them not so. <laughs> Rather them than me. Okay, just a quick update, show you where we've been, where we're going. So we've just made our way down that rather steep hill there and uh, just uh, slowly panning around. Um, now, you've got a choice here. We can either carry on the southwest west coast path, which goes right up the, um, the top of the cliff there, or we can turn left and go along the beach. And it's, as it's such a glorious day, I think we'll go along the beach. But um, there's no obvious way of crossing the, the river here. So, it looks like we've got to do slightly detour just along here uh, and around there to get to the other side. Okay, I think I'm going to change my mind about the way back. The easy way would be just to go along the beach back to West Bay. The hard way would be going along the coastal path up there. And that looks more of a challenge. And there's a couple of things I want to look up at there anyway. So. I may regret this, but that's where we're going to go. folks you remember right at the beginning when we uh, made our way onto the golf course I told you about the uh, sixth hole well here it is so there's the tee up there the actual green and hole it's all the way down there I wonder how many golf balls have been lost on this hole oh goodness well you can see where we're going next we've got a downhill bit and then an uphill bit, or well, the last downhill bit into West Bay. Now regular viewers might remember the television series The Fall and Rise of Reginald Perrin with Leonard Rossiter from the 1970s. And at the introduction of each episode, uh, Reggie used to strip off and run into the sea. I'm pretty sure that scene was uh, actually filmed here. I'm not going to do a reconstruction today. Well folks, we're back at the pier at West Bay. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today. The weather has been fantastic again and uh, well, the scenery out of this world. So we're finishing off with some, uh, our usual sausage and chips. By the way, you owe me half an ice cream. <laughs>
So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.